What's up YouTube, Dave here, Studio Motors. We are back with another episode. Before we get started, I really wanna say thank you to all of our subscribers, everybody that's dropping comments, liking the videos, sharing the videos. We really appreciate it. You guys have tremendously helped us grow. And one of our most successful videos, the Porsche 911 Turbo S, the new generation. If you haven't checked that one, it's getting a lot of love. You could click the link right here and check out our new turbo video. Let's jump into the new C8 Corvette Stingray convertible. The C8 Corvette, a legendary car at this point. This baby came to be because the guys at Chevy and the guys developing the Corvette topped out everything that they could do. When they made the C7 ZR1, it was very clear that these guys could push a lot of power, a lot of motorsport power out of their V8 engines. And the power became way over 700 and they realized that the cars are gonna top out. There's only so much the Corvette could do as a front engine rear wheel drive car. So development started on a mid-engine Corvette. Now, this thing has been a rumor for a very long time there's always been talks about a mid-engine Corvette and the Mad Men actually went through with it and they did it. It is unlike any Corvette in the past and I'm not talking about the engine being in the back. This Corvette literally puts the Corvette into supercar territory with only 495 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. It pulls a zero to 60 under 2.9 seconds. That's an insanely impressive number for a car that's under 500 horsepower, under 500 pound-feet of torque. Now we're shooting this video after the specs of the C8 Z06 have been released and that just reaffirms everything about the foundation of this vehicle. Where was it going to go from that point on? They made such a cool car and how much were they able to push the chassis? Now, the Z06 is the first really top-end performance model of the C8 Corvette, but we all know there's going to be more to come years down the line, like the ZR1 version and possibly other versions of the car. Right under 60,000, it really creates an easy entry point for such an amazing vehicle. A 2.9 second car for $60,000 is incredible. Engine sounds phenomenal, it feels phenomenal. I mean, especially considering that I just keep, gotta keep going back to it, that it's a 60K car. You're getting so much for the money, but the thing is selling for well over window sticker. So we're still not at that. I don't think anybody's bought a vet at 60K or even 70K to be honest. So we'll see how the market is when the Z06 comes out, but I think that Z06 is gonna be pulling 50,000 and more over window sticker. The reason they needed to go to a mid-engine vehicle is there are massive limitations when you have the engine sitting at the front of the car. Simple things like how high or low that engine could sit in the front of the vehicle. The other thing is the driver seating position. When you have an engine that's sitting fairly high up in the front, the driver must sit higher up. Now that is all weight, including the driver's body weight when it comes down to handling. A lower center of gravity is always much, much better than if you have that weight up top. So pushing everything as low as possible is very important. Now when you take that engine and you throw it to the back, it frees up a world of room on the front end of the car to put the articulation of the suspension in ways that were previously not possible at all. To have the grip when you're turning into corners, to have the grip when you're pulling out of corners, all of this, and I'm gonna keep reminding you guys, at $60,000. It's super quiet. You could definitely live with it day to day. Uh, it's the car that you start in the morning and it doesn't, you know, your neighbors don't hate you for it. It's very, very comfortable. This guy has the Magrite suspension, which is like a no brainer for the Corvette. So I'm gonna put it in touring mode, which is like the softest mode. And the steering becomes so soft and easy. It's like driving like a three series BMW or something. 
it's not like Camry loose or Lexus loose, but it's like a 3 Series loose. And this guy in the E55 wants to race. If there's one thing we know about E55s, it's that with the right tune and upgrades on it, those things become motherfuckers. Now, when you put the car into its sport mode or track mode, everything comes to life. It's really loud. This car in track mode gives you all of that. You have loud and amazingly hard shifts from the double clutch transmission when you want it, when you don't, and you want to just coast, it shifts at the exact right times. You never feel like it's hanging into gear too long or it's shifting too early. It's almost like it's perfect. And the transmission learns you as a driver. So if you're driving aggressively, the transmission will know that, hey, this guy likes to stay in uh, a lower gear a little bit longer before we shift up. So let's accommodate that. how the exterior designers and the uh, interior designers worked together to create and give people the visibility that they want, the drivability the car uh, gets as a daily drivable exotic. And they did a really good job with that stuff. So super low slung hood, really beefy on top of the tires, crazy sharp looking headlights. It's a Corvette and I think some of it is slightly over the top, but it looks great. It's doing phenomenal on the market. The front end I love on the car. I think they did a great job besides these wheels, I feel like these wheels could be so much better. There's nothing wrong with them. It's not a wrong wheel. And you could tell like the character lines the wheels have, the little parts that are popping out uh, versus the other parts. Uh, you could tell there's a lot of design elements taken from the vehicle itself and applied to the wheel. It just doesn't work. I think they could have done a much better job and the car deserves a better wheel to really bring it together. The front end of the vehicle flows through to the side, massive air vent on the side over here. They did a great job with this air vent. It's hard to put air vents on the sides of cars and not make it look like you just stole from your competition. Check out these renders of how the car was designed. I don't believe Corvettes and Chevy's intention was to make it as a flat brick and a square in the back when you're, when you pull up directly behind it, it's just, you don't see much else of the car. You don't see any of the sides popping out. You just see this, you know, rectangle with a lot happening here. So it's one of the gripes I have with the car, but again, let's go back to 60 freaking thousand dollars. So for 60 grand, and this is the best that they could do as far as, you know, wrapping it and just, you know, bringing it all together, then I'm absolutely happy with that. When you look at the front of the car, you, you could tell the speed, it's almost moving like it's in motion. The back end, however, seems kind of like a brick on the, on the back, just the shape alone. A lot of odd shapes too, like, you know, this shape, it's not a square, it's not a rectangle, it's, it's just there. The exhaust just seems a little bit too tucked in onto the back end when you're looking at it. It just seems like it's it's really in there. And for such an aggressive car, exhaust has so much to do with it. More aggressive, more prominent exhaust would help it look better. But again, I want to jump back right into $60,000, guys. I mean, for 60 grand, it is absolutely killer. And at that price point, I have nothing to nitpick on this car whatsoever. <music> glad it's here and I'm glad we have it and I'm super happy for everybody that wants to jump into something like a mid-engine car for less than even a hundred grand is an immaculate immaculate 
situation and it's only going to get better they just put out the z06 information on the c8 chassis and it's incredible numbers i'm a fan of naturally aspirated engines high revving naturally aspirated engine and they gave us 8400 rpm naturally aspirated v8 that's putting over 600 horsepower out that's incredible and it's not a massive v8 either it's not a big v8 so we have so much cool stuff to look forward to as car guys as long as this emission stuff doesn't kill the corvette and this isn't the last chassis that we see of a mid-engine car then we have some really really cool things ahead of us and what Chevy brings to the table with the next generation and the update and the facelifts that are gonna come you guys actually uh, utilized everything that makes a mid-engine car a great car and you guys have made a great car at a very very affordable price point for such a car for the enthusiasts so thank you Chevy you guys killed it So jumping into the interior of the car, there is a lot going on in here. And it's a lot of good stuff going on in here. This is a department where I feel like they really changed design language in a Corvette. I feel like this is the most effort that's ever gone into a Corvette interior from engineering angle to a comfort luxury angle to giving people everything that they want at their fingertips without having to go through a bunch of menus. This is the first Corvette with a double clutch transmission inside of it. What's impressive about double clutch is you don't have to go in the gear sequentially so it will dump you straight from sixth to second and pull okay we're in fifth all right if i want to go to two i just hold this and it'll just throw me into the lowest gear possible that's safe for the car to pull in i think that's really cool and obviously we're stuck in traffic on the freeway we're not doing anything with that here but it is really awesome for when you're coasting and you want to just give it everything all at once favorite menu items go up and down here volume is right here two scroll wheels bunch of buttons i mean it's got a lot going on over here the rest of the area is very clean now this is designed after formula one cars they wanted the driver to feel like they're inside of a cockpit and they actually really did a great job doing that everything is wrapped around the driver dramatically wrapped around the driver how high up this column goes and how much it separates you from your passenger is pretty unique to the corvette there's not many cars that have a center console that's this high the craftsmanship is great for the price point it exceeds the price point so you're getting much more than what you're paying for however it still does not get to those you know quarter million dollar exotics and ultra luxury cars obviously one of the things that absolutely sucks about this car let's say i want to jump in and move it you know just a little bit forward so nikita could get some better shots i gotta put my seatbelt on so you could start the car without your seatbelt on but you can't put the car into drive without your seatbelt on i hate it anyway moving forward as far as the entertainment in the car it's got an immaculate sound system this one is equipped with the bose performance series stainless steel covers lots of lines going through it it's got a certain characteristics of the car are super super european which is really cool um it doesn't feel bulky and chunky uh the buttons like we're used to from uh past american products everything is much much more refined they're closing the gap. America is closing the gap to our European counterparts. And this is an amazing step forward in that, whether it's from the comfort, the luxury, the craftsmanship, they really, really stepped their game up. This is a, a no brainer, amazing bang for your buck type of vehicle. Now, 60 grand is the entry point for the C8 Corvette. And is that a number that you would spend on a Corvette or would you spend that differently? Let us know in the comments below. Also, I'm very opinionated about cars. I'm a car guy. So if you agree or disagree, let me know in the comments. I'd love to have a conversation with our fans about it. Thank you for watching our C8 Corvette review. We have more cool videos coming. Next up is a Ferrari F8. So stay tuned, like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Thank you.